Welcome back. Let's study a little more about Unicode internationalization. Might be useful to you. You'll see that in this sample code, read Unicode, I import locale. Now that might be an important library to you if you're into code, because locale knows what your preferred encoding is. Here it is, get preferred encoding, that's locale. And that'll depend on where you're at. Now then we're going to read that file that we looked at a long time ago, formatting strings uni.py, because it had some Unicode in it. So we're going to read it with preferred encoding. We have a read file function that takes in our file and our encoding. Then we're going to set another encoding, and we're going to say new file is equal to change the encoding of this one from what it used to be, we want it to be. So we'll look at that function. We'll read that new file with that encoding in which we used, and then we'll read that new file in the original encoding. Okay, so we will have played with things this way and that. Okay, in read file, where we stick in our encoding with which to read it, we open our file and we specify that encoding. And we're looking at each line, we're looking at each character, and we're discovering if there is a character on that line that needs to be represented in Unicode, and if there is, we'll print it out. So that's all we're printing is the lines that have Unicode in them. Yeah, let's look at that first. We'll see that in that old file, uni.py, we have one line that says yen symbol equals that. And then we have these two comments that also have the end symbol in them. Okay, so the next thing that we did is called change encoding of the same uni.py. But it is now in our preferred encoding. And we're going to change it to UTF-16. We're going to split the file name. And this is so that I can make the changed encoding file have a different name so I don't write over the original file. When you split with an OS path split, it splits on the last slash, forward or backward, depending on your OS. So we get the name of the file and everything else that was ahead of it. On that name, we're going to R split at one time on the dot so that we get the extension and the front of the file name. Our new file name then will be the same path, but we're going to take the front and we're going to just put in the string that is the change to UTF-16 and the same extension. So we've made a new file name. We're going to open it and we're putting it in now in. That's our old encoding so we can read it. That's our read file. And we're going to open for writing our new file name with our change to encoding. That's our write file. And for every line that we read, we just write it. So all that encoding information was in the open part. Important to realize. That's what we did. Let's look at our output. Here we wrote a new file with UTF-16, and then we can read it with UTF-16. And, but then I read that UTF-16 with UTF-8 and we get a crash. And the crash you want to be aware of is UTF-8, whatever that is, codec can't decode. So that means you have to open that file in a different encoding. And you have to figure out what that is. And I don't have a usual way to tell you, except that it's very unusual that it's not UTF-8 in my experience. But I don't know. Maybe if you're reading some other languages, you might find other ones. Give the exercise a try. Pretty fun. I'll see you when you've done it.